At a broader level, what we're trying to do with this art show is really demonstrate the relationship between this idea of decentralization. Hi, I'm Ross Gates from Alpha Growth. Today we're at Starfish Mission for SF Blockchain Week and I'm here with Matthew from Catalyzing Coherence. Matthew, what's with all this art around us? So basically, you know, you can see a very small proportion of it back here. This is uh, an artist, Yi Ying Lu, uh, who's an amazing designer from the area. She did the Twitter fail whale. But at a broader level, what we're trying to do with this art show is really demonstrate the relationship between this idea of decentralization and uh, the aspect of art that can both bring out the, the process of decentralization and visualize that in a more concrete way, but also act as a, as a vision for the future, as a, as a leading edge of where this process can and perhaps should go. Gotcha. So not only is this an art show in a decentralized place, but the art over here, as I can see, actually has decentralized aspects and technology in it. And how do you find these artists that are promoting these uh, different ideas to be in your art show? Yeah, so I think basically this has been, it's been fairly organic, right? I have been in San Francisco now for about five years after moving here, and I've been part of communities that are at that intersection of art and technology. And I have met people who, you know, whose work is here. So the art over there is a person named Vera Gold, who taps far more into the abstract tension between order and chaos. Um, she's a mathematics and music major, or, or, or you know, mathematician and musician, who also creates uh, amazing art that really evokes that tension. And I think that the tension that she evokes is also this interesting tension. It's a very similar tension to the tension between centralization and decentralization. Um, we have Casey Kripe, who's, a, uh, who's an artist who really does a wonderful job at representing uh, the invisible aspects of complex systems in a way that is not just literal like you would find in textbooks, but is it's highly exploratory that really uh, taps into the human curiosity. You can look at something and just spend 20, 30 minutes unpacking all the oh, different layers of meaning there. So yeah, it's, and it's just I, this space, you know, like any... There's actually, there's a, there's a Francis Bacon quote that really resonates with me. And uh, back in his day, they used to take notes on, on wax tablets, right? You had to erase the wax tablet and uh, to write in anything else. He said basically, on wax and tablets, you have to erase the old before you can write in the new. But in the mind, it is not so. There you must write in the new before you can erase the old. And I think that really speaks to the role and responsibility of the art community to actually paint positive uh, valuable visions of the future or the direction towards which we should point. And that was the point of this whole show. Upon the past so that you can see where it's coming from and the entire yep. story of the evolution. Exactly. That is so cool. So what's the next big goal for uh, this art show and where do you see it going? So I think one of the really cool things, the thing I'm most excited about in terms of this art show is the collective commission that we're doing. So it is a representation by Casey Kripe uh, not only of the process or the evolution from centralized structures or systems to decentralized structures or systems, uh, but it is also the centerpiece for a conceptual or embodied exploration of collective ownership. So anybody at any of these events this week can actually buy a portion of it. There's no fixed top or there's no set limit and there's no minimum. Anyone who wants to be a part of this community, who wants to support the artist, who wants to form a community around the artist, can buy into this piece of art. And what we're going to do is actually uh, draft, well, I'm drafting a constitution at the moment uh, that will go up for constitutional review amongst all those who have bought in. And that will then be taken and put into smart contract form. And the smart contract will govern whose house that is in, what shows it goes to, when somebody can liquidate a portion of that value, uh, who, if anyone, can buy in in the future. So all of these aspects that would go along, all these questions that need to be answered when it comes to collective ownership are going to be encoded uh, on a smart contract and stewarded through the world. That is pretty cool. Who, so who's responsible for that stewardship? If it's in my house, do I have to pack it up into a box and ship it to the next person? And what if I forget about it? So these are questions that are open questions right now. These are questions that we're trying to answer. And it's, it's, I think it's interesting because answering all of these questions about a piece of art as, um, you know, uh, I don't want to say trivial, but as small as that might seem, uh, actually are the same questions that would go into uh, the basically the provenance or the, the movement of most other resources 
through our world. And we're not really used to thinking about how to navigate that collectively. Most of the time, it's a, a centralized actor um, uh, directing or, or effectively demanding that the path of a good or resource go from point X to point Y. And, um, and we don't do it in a way that is collective oftentimes because it's, it's not efficient, right? right? But that, that's, that desire, that drive for efficiency over all else also uh, tends to suppress many other dimensions of human value and many other aspects of, um, of, of, uh, of value in the world that are most embodied by art. So that's why we really wanted to take a piece of art and create a community around that and start asking these questions, not as a part of a company, not as a part of some economic entity that is trying to extract value from the network. Because as soon as you create a company around a decentralized entity, it you're, centralized. Immediately de yeah, you're immediately saying, I'm going to disintermediate. I'm going to attempt to extract value through my position, uh, my privileged position of uh, disintermediating the flow of whatever we might be talking about, right? So. We didn't want that. What I really wanted to do, and what we really wanted to do with this piece, for this collective commission, was create a space for a group of people who cared about art and with whom the art resonated to experiment and really live out this idea of decentralized decision making and co-ownership and see where it goes. We don't know where it's gonna go, but that's the exciting and like that's the fun part of doing this. That is exciting. So if people wanna get involved, where can they reach out and learn more? And can they see these pieces of artwork? Uh... Definitely, so reaching out, they can contact me at Matthew at catalyzingcoherence.com. Um, these pieces, the gallery and the show will be up through the end of blockchain week here in the, the back room of Starfish Mission, which is at 1535 Mission Street. And uh, we'd obviously, I don't know when this is gonna air, but if it airs before, uh, before the show ends, who knows? Uh, if not, get in touch with me. I can obviously, we've taken photos. Uh, I can send photos. I can share photos with you if you'd like to sure. post them. As and you plan on holding this. future shows that spawn out of this one? TBD. This is my first show. Um, it was just kind of, it was something that I really wanted to do as an extension of this idea uh, behind Catalyzing Coherence, which is a podcast, my podcast, that is, you know, its goal is to facilitate the flow of information between different spaces in our world that don't usually speak with one another, that think that they're examining different parts of reality. So like the spiritual domain and the scientific domain or the political domain, we think these are such different domains, but the patterns emerge in each of them that are actually quite similar. And uh, the goal of this podcast is to figure out what those connections are. And ironically, it seems as if, or maybe not ironically, but interestingly, it seems as if the decentralized space is the intersection of many of these places. So it's very natural to fold in this podcast into, into this space. That's awesome. So Matthew, you've got art, you've got podcast. Can't wait to see where it goes. Can't wait to hear more. Thank you Thank very you much. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. You're welcome. Bye.